What's going on my exotic family? It's your boy Dre. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about my personal favorite species of snakes, which are blood pythons. As you guys seen in the title, but more specifically, we're talking about things you should know before getting one. Stay tuned. <laughs> Alright everybody, so welcome back to the video. Like I said, we're talking blood pythons. This video would not be a video if I didn't grab out my boy Kato here. This is my blood python Kato. He is a matrix blood python. He is about three and a half years old now and this is my favorite species of snake, hands down. Um, I know I talk a lot about, you know, green tree pythons and everything, but this right here is my favorite species of all snakes. Now, anyways, getting back to the video. So the first thing you should know about these guys is they are extremely terrestrial snakes. These guys do not have a climbing bone in their body. I'm not saying they're not able to climb, but um, it's not like a ball python. Ball pythons are known to be terrestrial. Um, however, ball pythons will climb. These guys will not climb at all whatsoever. They are very kind of just lazy snakes as you can see from how thick they are. You can see from how thick they are versus like a carpet python or anything like that. Um, but they are extremely terrestrial. And you can kind of see that um, as you can see I'm supporting the entire body. Um, so he feels secure and he doesn't feel like he's falling or anything like that. So which brings me to my next point is handling with these guys can be very tough. Um, now these guys get a huge rap in the reptile world for being these crazy beast that'll attack you and um it's just not true now they're not for everybody i will say that they are definitely not for everybody and should go to the i would say intermediate to experienced keepers um because they do have moments where they don't want to be bothered and they'll definitely let you know um, they will put up a huge fight when you're trying to get them out of the get them out of the enclosure so um for, for that um, i've had kato for like i said three and a half years now even with his calm as he seems, I still um, use a snake hook with him just to um, ensure that he doesn't feel stressed and he's not striking or anything because don't let the size fool you. These guys have a pretty quick strike. So when you're handling these guys, be cautious and be careful. Um, obviously now that he's out and I'm comfortable with him, I kind of can read his body and I know what to expect and I know how to handle him and deal with him. But as you can see, at all times I'm supporting the bulk of his body so he feels support. I would say that's probably one of the biggest reasons why blood pythons get defensive is because their body is not supported. Um, a lot of people try to hold them, you know, like a boa or, you know, a typical python that will climb and these guys do not like to be held like that at all whatsoever. So keep that in mind. Now, probably one of the biggest things that I see um, all over the internet is a lot of people often get these guys confused with their very closely related cousins, um, short tail pythons, Sumatran short tail pythons and black headed pythons. So Sumatran short tail pythons, black headed pythons and blood pythons are all technically considered to be in the blood python family, but they are in fact three different snakes. Um, so that's why it's important that you do your research so you're able to distinguish which is which. Um, blood pythons here are gonna be the biggest of the three and also their scientific name, which is Python Brongers My. Um, so again, do your research so you know um, which morph or which locale or species is which um, because I have seen some people actually, you know, say they're getting one snake and then they get sold something else and um, it's just not a situation that you want to be in. So definitely do your research. Um, that way you're able to educate yourself, but you'll, you'll be able to tell the difference yourself so you don't have to get yourself in that situation. Now, again, with these guys being a pretty thick snake, um, they're usually for the most part pretty laid back and you know kind of slow, um, I guess I would say at least, um, until you disturb them and they feel you know defensive. Um, they are a very, very alert snake. So if you get a new blood python um, and you don't think they're gonna strike, chances are they're probably gonna strike. Again, they are a lot quicker than you think they are. Um, even now, Kato, like I said, I've had Kato for like three and a half years now and there's still moments where he's not in the mood and I have to kind of respect that. But if I have to get in there to pull poop or I have to pull him out to do a deep cleaning and he's not in the mood, it's kind of something I have to deal with. Um, as a snake keeper, snake owner, whatever, you kind of have to 
know how to deal with those situations. Snakes have teeth, they're gonna bite, they're gonna strike, and as reptile owners, that is something that we expect. Obviously, we wanna avoid uh, as many of those situations as possible because that does stress the snake out. So that's why um, snake handling or snake cooking uh, is very important. So you can remove the snake um, as quickly as possible, get the job done and put the snake back and let them do their own thing. Um, but but again, with Kato, once I get him out, he's fine. Oh, they are very intelligent snakes and this is one snake that I, I just, <laughs> I don't completely trust quite yet. Again, they're not an aggressive snake, but they're very, very intelligent. And they, when they want something, they have their mindset on it, they're gonna get it. Alrighty, and lastly, just like most other snakes that we have now in the hobby, these guys come in a plethora of different morphs. As I said here before, he is what's called a matrix, but there's T negative, there's T positive, there's batik, there's Batrix, there's a bunch of different morphs of these guys and they're very pretty. My personal favorite is gonna be the ivory morph, um, which if you take matrix, and matrix that is how you make ivories um now i'm in no way shape or form an expert on morphs when it comes to any snake for that matter um but i do know that there's quite a bit of morphs when it comes to blood pythons so again do your research um, just to make sure that you know what you're getting into um again i would consider these guys an intermediate to advanced snake um so if it's something that you know you're not ready for, definitely don't do it. And then again, um, although these guys aren't climbers, they still need quite a bit of room. These guys are in no way, shape or form a small snake. Um, these guys usually get up to around four to six foot. So literally they're like a ball python on steroids, but they get girthier. They get pretty, pretty large. And you can, I'll post a picture of a pretty large, uh, an adult up here, just so you guys can see um, the difference. But if you can handle that, if you can deal with the snake that goes through mood swings, I guess you could say, um, and you know, it's gonna eat you know bigger meals when they get older and requires a pretty decently sized enclosure, definitely look into a blood python. Like I said, um, Luther and Cato are the snakes that I get asked the most questions about because they are two of my bigger snakes. And, and Kato's not huge um, in my opinion. I mean, he's a big snake, obviously. I got him as a hatchling. He's not huge, but he is a big boy. Um, he's eating large rats, believe it or not. So you definitely wanna know what you're getting yourself into, especially when dealing with these guys, because these guys, they do pack a, they do pack a punch. I've never been bitten by this guy, but he struck at me a couple times, and I really would hate to be behind that bite. So again, do your research, know what you're getting yourself into, and know what to prepare yourself for. Alrighty guys, so that is today's video. Hope you guys liked seeing Kato here. It's been a while, I've had a lot of people ask me to do an update on him and here he is doing good. Um, he's getting ready for the move as well. He also, just like everyone else, will be getting a new enclosure once we move and everything like that. Um, so again, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing him. Drop a comment down below and let me know what you guys think of the video. Hit that subscribe button. Turn those post notifications on so you don't miss any uploads. Follow me on Instagram at DWExotics. And as always, stay exotic.